We're going to be doing two things today in Leviticus. One will be the sacrifices. So we'll learn, basically, I'll teach you guys how to be priests, okay? So how to be a priest and the priestly sacrifices. And then the other thing is then after doing the really kind of heavy priestly stuff, we'll uh, talk about that, that it's kind of sad because all these animals are being killed and stuff. We'll, uh, we'll then talk about the feasts of Israel, and the feasts of Israel will be a time of celebration. So... Let's bring up the sacrifices. Whoops. Okay. Okay, one of the questions that comes up is, as you approach the book of Leviticus, is that there's all these sacrifices, and you say, what, why are there so many different types of sacrifices? So we want to explain the different types of sacrifices, embedding it in basically different aspects of sin. And so I just want to kind of run through. These are different aspects of sin that, that come up. Normally when people think of sin, they think it as kind of a unitary concept. In other words, that sin is sin, and it's just you did something wrong, and that's it. Uh, but actually, sin is a complex of things, and so we want to look at that. The first thing that sin does, and we see this in the book of Numbers, what we'll be looking at later, is that when people sin, does God respond with anger? And have you seen in the book of Numbers, you remember when they're wandering in the wilderness, God's anger gets anger at the, at the response to sin. So we have anger. What do you, how do you handle anger? There's propitiation. What is propitiation? Some of you know what propitiation is. Um, in my case, uh, I did something that I knew my dad was going to be very angry about. So question, did I voluntarily all by myself, cut the lawn without him asking. So that when he got home, he saw that the lawn was cut and he'd be favorably disposed. Okay, uh, I come home, uh, my wife's mad at me for something, and so I did something that was wrong. Question, will you buy flowers? Do flowers kind of cover it over? Sometimes, yes. Can flowers backfire? If, you, if the flowers are patronizing and the flowers don't work. So you've got to be careful with flowers. They can go either way. But anyway... Well, what I'm saying is you do something nice to try to appease their anger. And so propitiation will be God's anger that needs to be propitiated, calm down kind of thing in anger. Again, we'll be talking more about anger. Our culture doesn't do well in handling anger at all. Um, pollution. Sin causes pollution. There's a, defiling, there's a defiling nature of sin that causes pollution. I don't know, have any of you ever been in an environment that is so, so sinful that you actually physically felt dirty? And I've been in such environments occasionally, and, and it's just where you, you actually feel dirty. Um, and this, this idea of pollution, that you feel the pollution, the, the, the filthiness of sin, and then there's need for purification. Purification, a lot of times purification in Scripture will be done with what substance? Water. They'll use water for purification, cleansing, cleansing, purification, that type of thing. So from the pollution of sin, there's need for purification. Now, guilt and shame, guilt and shame. Have any of you ever done something wrong in your parents? And, and we used to have this tradition where you basically run into your bedroom, you dive in your bed, you pull a blanket and the pillow over your head and hope you don't get caught, okay? But this idea of covering, of, of needing a covering, uh, for shame, okay? For shame and guilt and shame. Uh, by the way, do we live in a no shame culture? Do we live in a no shame culture? That's and there's nothing shames us and things. And so, but in those days, shame was a really big thing. What do you do to shame? You, you make atonement for it. What does atonement mean? Atonement means you provide a covering for shame. You provide a covering for shame. And so Adam and Eve in the garden, they sin in the garden. Do they feel shame? And so what do they do with themselves? They cover themselves, what? They hide in the bushes, okay? And so basically there's a need for a covering, and this is what this covering is called atonement, okay? This need, the need for a covering for shame and guilt. Damage done. Does sin actually do damage on other people? Somebody steals something, okay? Somebody steals something. Does it actually damage someone else? Stealing something, it actually damages someone else. So reparation, you steal something, you get caught, do you have to pay it back? You have to pay it back in multiples of four, okay? You gotta pay back four times what you took. So that's reparation. 
By the way, does our culture deal with reparation very well? A person does a crime, do they have to make reparation? Or do we just throw them in jail? We throw them in jail. A person violates and damages another person. Do they ever have to make reparation to that person? Mostly not in our culture, where the person is faced with the person that they victimized, and they have to make reparation. In our culture, we just lock them away, and the victim ends up having to eat the, you know, the things on that. So this idea of reparation, the damage is done, sin does damage on a person, reparation, that you've got to actually fix, try to fix what you did. Um, so for example, somebody does something wrong in our culture. Have any of you guys ever seen it where they have to do so many hours of what? Community service, okay? In other words, they, they violated the community, so the judge says you need to do 40 hours of community service. Is there something good about that, that the person actually can work to, to repay the damage that they've done. And so that's uh, the notion of reparation. I wish our culture had more of this uh, notion of reparation. I think it would actually help a lot of the people who have violated others that if they actually had to repay and stuff. Eric? Turn your propitiation, propitiation and uh, reparation. Okay, propitiation is a response to anger and trying to appease the anger of God. So propitiation is an appeasement kind of thing. In my case, it would be I buy flowers to my wife and I ask her to go out for dinner, okay, to try to make it up to her for something I did wrong. So I'm trying to appease her anger that I'm expecting. Reparation would be, um, reparation would be, uh, um, she has this very special thing and I just busted it, okay. And reparation would be what? Yeah, I'd get her a new one and things and hope that she maybe wouldn't even find out. I'd get her a new one before she gets home. Anyways, but you know what I'm saying? The, the reparation would be, I busted it. Appeasement would be what? I busted it, she's going to be angry, and I try to appease her anger. Reparation is, hey, I'll get you a new one. So that, that would be the difference between the two. Good point. Communion is broken, okay? When sin... Sin breaks communion between people. person that lies about another person, gossips about another person, it breaks communion with people. And so the community is in damage with sin. And so basically the community, how do you restore community? It's done through com confession. And by the way, do you remember in the New Testament it says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. The sins are to be confessed in the community. And then there's restoration. Uh, have any of you guys been in a place, in a church, where the, uh, there's been some real bad sin in the church and stuff, and the church gets together, the person confesses their sin, and the church gathers around this person and restores them? Okay? This process of restoration. Those are really important processes, confession of sin and restoration. Okay? Um, so this is basically, these are all aspects. Now, will there be different aspects of the sacrifices that hit these things? So the sacrifices will be set up to kind of work with some of these concepts here. And let's, uh, okay, this is how we do our sacrifices. First of all, just the importance of blood. The importance of blood. Hebrews 9.22 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Ultimately, whose blood would be shed for the remission of sin? Jesus' blood, and so Jesus dies. Is Christianity, in that sense, a bloody religion? It very much is. It's through the blood of Christ that we're made whole and we're cleansed. By the way, do you get the irony there? By Christ's blood, we are cleansed. Is blood usually a cleansing? You know what I'm saying? You, you see the usually staining of blood, but blood is cleansing. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. The New Testament, in the Old Testament, the Jews were not allowed to drink blood. They had to drain the blood out of the animal uh, before they would eat the meat and things like that. So blood was, was specially sanctioned um, in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus here, they were not allowed to eat blood things. Now, 